Bradley, I'm Martin. And I'm Leanne. Welcome to Cancer Connect. Hello everyone and welcome to Kamsa Connect, a Sunday worship service brought to you by the Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army family. We're a church that believes everyone is welcome, nobody is perfect and anything is possible. It most definitely is. Well, in this special Remembrance Sunday episode, we're going to be commemorating this very special day with songs and readings and of course the act of remembrance, including two minute silence at 11am here in the UK. So thank you for joining us a little later today so that we can share in that special act together. Today we're thinking about the significance of sacrifice and how we can look back and remember with sadness but also joy too. We're going to be looking at some verses from the New Testament book of Hebrews to remind ourselves of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross 2,000 years ago and how his sacrifice meant freedom for the world. So then, to commence our worship service today, we invite you to join in the singing of a traditional Remembrance Sunday hymn that calls on God the Father, Son and Spirit to lead us, forgive us and fill our hearts with joy. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. you for joining with us in that song. Now you may know from Norman's update segment each week that we produce a monthly prayer leaflet. This is something that we've been doing for almost two years now with one of our congregation members, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Bateman, organising it on behalf of the Kamza family. That's right and in the October and November editions of the prayer leaflet Alan has been leading us in an exploration of the names of God from scripture. Now, if you'd like to uh, receive those leaflets, the October and the November editions, or you'd like to join our mailing list to receive them in the future, then just send us an email. Our details are in the description below. So to tie in with this theme, we are thrilled to be able to have the voice of Major Beverly Lloyd, the core officer at Stowmarket Core here in the UK and daughter of Alan and Evelyn, to lead us in a prayer video that celebrates some of these names of God. So on this special day, when we recall the faithfulness of God through times of war and peace, let's join together in prayer as we draw close to him and celebrate all that he is to us. Shall we pray? 
God, this morning we worship you. You are ancient of days, the Alpha, the Anointed One. You are beautiful, the Christ, our Deliverer, Eternal God. You are our Father, gracious, our healer. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are our Messiah, new every morning, Yahweh Nisi. You are omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Our priest, the one who quiets our hearts. For you are a righteous God. You are El Roy, the God who sees, and El Shaddai, our Savior. You are timeless, unparalleled, understanding. You are a very begotten Father, worthy of our praise, the examiner of our hearts. Everything in you is yes and amen. You are Yahweh. You are the Omega, the end. God, this morning, we worship you. Abba, Abba Father. We praise you, the Anointed One. We worship you, the God who gave you birth. We acknowledge that you are El Dia, the God of all knowledge, that you are El Elyon, the God Most High, that you are El Olam, the everlasting God, El Roy, the God who sees, El Shaddai, God Almighty, Elohim, the Creator, Yahweh, the Self-Existent One, Yahweh Bor, the Lord Creator, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, our banner. Yahweh Ra, the Lord, our shepherd. Yahweh Rafa, the Lord that heals. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord of peace. Yahweh Shama, the Lord is there. Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Yahweh Tzidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness and Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. We worship you, God, this morning. Amen and amen.
Thanks for sharing with us in prayer. And may we all make time in the coming days to be still and know God. Now, coming up will be our scripture reading and a further opportunity to sing together, this time led by our worship band. First, though, we'll have our weekly update and then there'll be opportunity for us all to give in the weekly offering. So over to you, Norman. Good morning, everyone. What a change once again this week. New government guidance and direction is upon us all once again. And this is summarised in our officers update number 38. It does mean that we are all restricted in what we're able to do from a core perspective. And sadly, our charity shop is considered to be non-essential. So we'll remain closed until the 2nd of December. In that same update, you'll find contact details while our officers take a well-earned break and they take that break from tomorrow for a week. Our community manager and a number of volunteers have been very busy in the past week preparing a substantial number of food bags ready for our Christmas parcels scheme. As I speak, you can see that our YP Hall has a new carpet. Our activities for the coming week are as follows. On this same video channel on a Sunday morning is kids time and then every Wednesday at 7pm is Prayer Matters which is also available on our Facebook page at the same time. Now the November episode of Brass Reflections is on Tuesday this week. It features the choice of our community manager Jan who will be introducing Richard Phillips' Metamorphosis. So make sure you tune in at 8pm. After its short break last week CAMSA Connect Sings returns on Wednesday at 8pm. I'm told it will have a gospel feel this week. Soon we shall be taking up our offering, so please have your phones ready. As mentioned in previous weeks, we have It's Virtually Christmas, our online Christmas carol concert on Sunday the 20th of December at 6pm. I have already indicated that we have special guests appearing and I can now reveal that these are Bones Apart, Tim Milchrist, Jules Tostabin Hobbs, Anthony Harris, and Jeremy Salis from BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, all ably supported by our very own Cambridge Citadel musicians. Tickets are at £10 per household and they will go on sale at the end of November, and all the profits from this will be going to charity. We do hope you can join us, and don't worry. We've arranged a few extra sofas to ensure there is room for you all. Thanks for your giving in the offering last week, which amounted to £205. It is much appreciated. Now, let us give to the Lord in our offering. Today's reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 5 to 10. When Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God as is written about me in the scriptures. First Christ said, You did not want animal sacrifices, or sin offerings, or burnt offerings, or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them. 
though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, Look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Amen. Well, today is a day for remembering. And for me, Remembrance Sunday has been a day for remembering with sadness, but also joy. Sadness because those who have fought for our country remember so vividly the pain of war and the grief of losing comrades. But joy because those of us who are fortunate enough to have no direct experience of war can remember with joy and gratitude those to whom we owe our freedom and safety today. Recently on Kamsa Connect, we looked into the story of the Jewish Passover festival, and we learned that it too is a time of year when the Jewish people remember their nation's suffering. 
And in our passage from Hebrews chapter 10 today, we remember how Christ died for us. Both of these stories cause us to reflect with pain and sadness, but they are also stories that end with liberation and joy. One symbol of remembrance which we use today is the poppy. This wildflower flourishes in the fields of northern France, where the trenches of the First World War were dug. I only learned recently that poppy seeds need light in order to germinate, so over a hundred years ago seeds which had been ploughed deep into the ground sprang to new life when the earth was churned up by trench digging and by explosions. Fields full of poppies grew as a result and became our symbol of remembrance today. So there we have it, the poppy. It's amazing that something so ugly as war gifted us with something so vibrant and beautiful. And that parallels with the gospel message we have heard today that Christ offered himself as a sacrifice for our freedom. His death on the cross, something ugly, resulted in the beautiful freedom we have to live as God's people in his world. Why did Christ's sacrifice bring freedom? Well, we were in bondage. We were prisoners to living our life our own way and not God's. And the scriptures tell us that the wages of this kind of choice, which the Bible calls sin, is death. So in other words, if we live our lives the way we want to live, with self on the throne and Christ still on the cross, then we face mortality and death. But if we place Christ on the throne of our lives and put our own selfish ideals to death, then we receive the gift of eternal life. And this is the most marvellous message of all time. So poppy seeds should not stay buried. They need to be brought into the light so that they can grow and blossom into new life. And in the same way, the story of Christ's sacrifice needs to be told so that we remember the new life he gave us by freeing us from sin and death. On this day of remembrance, may we remember the truth that the writer to the new Hebrew Christians 2,000 years ago wrote that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, offered himself as a sacrifice that is good forever. It's a retrospective and retroactive act for every man, woman, boy and girl in the world who has ever lived and ever will live. And especially today, we should also recall our own memories of war and sacrifice to bring them into light so that the world may rejoice in its hard-won freedom. So this Remembrance Day, let us give thanks to God for the sacrifice of his son Jesus who died for our sins and rose to life to prove once and for all that life is not only possible but a reality for all who believe in him. And let us honour the fallen. Let us salute all those who gave there today for our tomorrow. Let us never forget. They are more than just names, more than blocks of stone set in rows, more than memories. They are our brothers and sisters our parents and our children, friends, loved ones, and even strangers who believed that we were worth fighting for, that we were worth dying for. They stand for justice, for courage, for heroism and fearlessness in the face of danger. They stand for the brave men and women who selflessly answered the call and gave their very lives for the cause of freedom. Let us never take their sacrifice for granted, but instead remember with gratitude those who have served today, tomorrow and every day thereafter. By the grace of God, 
if we walk upon free soil, if we breathe in the sweetness of liberty, let us give thanks, let us honour the fallen, and let us never forget. At the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month, the guns fell silent on the Western Front to bring to an end the First World War. Our nation and Commonwealth has recalled that moment through our armistice and remembrance events down through the decades, decades during which the men and women of our armed services have continued to pay the ultimate price. And so, more than a hundred years later, we gather today to remember lives sacrificed in the service of our country and those traumatised and injured by conflict. May we have such a devotion to justice and freedom that the heroism of all who fought and still fight may continue to be remembered in a nation of service and in a world of peace. They shall not grow old as we are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will remember, remember them. them.
when you go home. Tell them of us and say. For your tomorrow we gave our today. Almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day. Forgive our foolish ways, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Pour out your peace into the hearts of all that all races and people may learn to live as members of one family in obedience to your law. Father, we remember those still caught up in conflicts around the world. We remember too all those who lose their lives in wars which are not of their own making. As we give thanks and remember those who have given their all for us, we thank you that you gave Jesus to the world so that by his sacrifice all may have new life. Help us to bring that message to the world this day and always. Amen. And Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll join us for Kamsa Connect next week when we'll be back at the regular time of 10 a.m. here in the UK. Yeah, it will be good to see you. Well, in a few moments, all the wonderful people of our Wednesday Kamsa Connect Sings group are going to bring our worship to a close with a musical setting of the priestly blessing from the Book of Numbers. First, though, let's join together in singing two verses of John Ellerton's wonderful hymn, The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, Is Ended. So, until next week, keep safe, keep well, and keep connected. God God bless bless you. you.